Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We lift high the banner. We lift high the name of Jesus tonight. We welcome you. We welcome you to worship with us on this Wednesday. We welcome you to sanctify your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, your patio, wherever you are. Sanctify it. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart right now. And we ask God that you would come and tabernacle with us. We open the door of our mind and our heart right now, Father. And we ask that the Holy Spirit would come. We ask that Jesus Christ would come, even so come, Holy Father, and be with us tonight. We welcome you to speak into our life. We welcome you, Lord God, to remove, Lord God, whatever is hindering a fresh move of God in our life from you. Have your way in and through us tonight, oh God. We're ready, Lord. We're ready for overflow. We're ready for renewal. We're ready for revival. We're ready to be lifted up, God, out of muck and mire. How great is our God tonight? Have your way, sir. We love you. We praise you. Come on and give God praise for the great name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessing right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give your great God a great praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. And we bless him tonight. We honor him tonight. We lift our hands to him. our voice to him. Come on, let God hear your voice. I'm 
Come on, just give him your worship. Come on, let him hear your voice. I bless your name for your wonderful, your mighty, your awesome. Oh, I bless your name. I bless your name. his name to be wonderful <laughs> can you declare his name to be awesome <laughs> can you declare his name to be faithful <laughs> I dare you right where you are just begin to open up your mouth <laughs> and begin to worship him <laughs> tell him how grateful and thankful you are hallelujah God Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening, Potter's House, Dayton International Ministries. We thank God for you tonight on this steamy, hot, glory to God, Wednesday night evening here at the Potter's House. Worship on Wednesday. We're glad to be back in the house of God tonight. And we're glad that you can join us. Amen. And we just thank God for you. We're blessing God for you tonight. I pray that you're somewhere where you can stay cool, amen, and uh, but also be able to get into the word of the Lord, hallelujah, and that we might bless his holy name, <clears throat> hallelujah, his name is holy, and we will bless his holy name, hallelujah, before we dive into the word of God tonight, there are a few uh, announcements we want to make. Uh, just a reminder to let you know of some things that are going on here at the Potter's House, Dayton International Ministries. Uh, we want to invite you on June the 4th, 
uh, to join us here at the Potter's House uh, with the Cares, Justice, Amen, where we will be um, allowing those who are interested in participating in the Ohio Governor's Expedited Pardon Project. Amen. We invite you to come out uh, to do a free eligibility screening clinic right here at the Potter's House. It'll be from uh, 3 p.m. on June the 4th, 2022, right here at the Potter's House down in our fellowship hall uh, where our minister, our very own minister, prophetess Janelle Reeves, the um, handling that. And so we invite you to come out. If you're interested in getting a pardon, getting your sentences uh, pardoned by the Ohio governor, uh, we want you to come out and take your free screening, eligibility screening, and we hope, amen, that we can get some folk, amen, released, glory to God, from uh, the burden of having a felony on your record. Amen. And uh, so we invite you to come out, 2050 Germantown Street, Dayton, Ohio, 45417. Uh, Walk-ins are welcome. Amen. We'll have uh, some law students from the University of Dayton who will be here to help navigate you through the process and answer any questions that you might have. And uh, we're excited about uh, partnering with Care Justice Institute, uh, where our bishop, Bishop Mark T. McGuire Sr., is the president. Amen. And uh, we invite you to come out and be a part of that process. Also on June the 4th, uh, we're uh, working with one of our partners um, over at uh, Mount Enid, over on West 3rd Street, uh, Euclid Avenue, I believe it is. Euclid and West 3rd, 920 South Euclid Street, Dayton, Ohio, 45417. Uh, we're having also a health screening. Uh, availability for those of you that want to come and be tested, have your blood pressure tested, uh, your glucose tested, your cholesterol tested, and so many other things that are going to be happening there at 920 South Euclid Avenue. Also on June the 4th, starts at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. <coughs> Amen. We invite you to come out and be a part of that. Uh, take care of your health, get your health in order. Uh, and ask any questions that you might have, amen, uh, about um, some of the testings that are going on. I do understand they're going to be testing uh, for STDs. They're going to be testing, amen, for HIV and some other testing that will be available for you. Those of you that are interested, 920 South Euclid. It's a health fair and outreach program scheduled for June 4th, 2022 at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. <coughs> There'll be a lot of uh, face painting for kids. Uh, bring your children. They'll have all kinds of things, fan, uh, fun and family opportunities for, you, for your family to, to really have a good time on Saturday afternoon while you're getting your screening. So we invite you to be a part of that. Also on June uh, 18th, <coughs> excuse me, on June 18th and uh, the 19th, which will be our Father's Day weekend. Hallelujah. We're excited about that and we're looking forward uh, to having our bishop uh, and Lady Angela in town with us on that weekend. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to invite all men, fathers, your sons, your nephews, your, your grandsons, your neighbors. We're inviting all men to come out for our prayer breakfast, Father's Day prayer breakfast on June 18th at 9 a.m right here at the Potter's House, Dayton International Ministries. If you know any men, amen, it's dear to your life, dear to your heart. Ladies, we're inviting you to have your, uh, uh, get a hold of the men in your life, invite them to come out and spend a morning breakfast with us here at the Potter's House. Uh, we want to pour into the men's lives and there's some things we want to share and we're looking to have a good meal, amen, on Saturday morning, June 18th. Also on June 19th, we'll have our Father's Day service right here at the Potter's House and uh, we're also inviting over a hundred men. We want to fill this place up with over a hundred men and women you're invited to the service on Sunday uh, but it's all men for the breakfast. Amen. Unless you're coming to help serve or something. We, we won't turn your way. Amen. If you got sons and uh, you got sons and you want to bring your sons 
and you don't have a, a man in your life or the, or the dad's not in your life, we invite you to bring them and you can, you're welcome to come and bring your sons. We would love to have you and have your, have your sons here with us on June 18th on our breakfast, uh, prayer breakfast, Father's Day prayer breakfast. All right? So that's June 18th and June 19th. We're going to be enjoying Father's on the Father's Day weekend. And we invite all of you to come out and help us celebrate fathers and the men in your life. We want to give God glory for each and every one of them in Jesus' name. And we pray that you'll bring your sons, your nephews, your cousins, and your grandchildren out to be a part of that, uh, this wonderful time we're going to have in the Lord. All right? All right. Glory to God. Uh, I know I'm probably forgetting something, but uh, don't charge it to my heart. Amen. But we thank God for you, and we look forward to seeing all of you over the next couple of weeks. Amen. Our scripture reading tonight will be coming out of 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 through 11, and Matthew chapter 14, verses 24 through 28. We want to give God honor for our First Lady, Lady Isabel Moss, and her absence tonight. Uh, we thank God for her. Amen. And we bless God for her life. Hallelujah. And we uh, just celebrate him. Amen. For what he's doing in and through her life. We also thank God. Amen. For our Bishop, Bishop Mark C. McGuire Sr., Lady Angela down in Jacksonville, Florida. We bless God for them tonight. Uh, and as always, we thank God for our Grand Bishop in the Ministry, Bishop Bob McLaughlin and Lady Narlene, down at the Potter's House International Ministries in Jacksonville, Florida. We give God glory for each and every one of them, and we thank God for blessing us in our lives here in Dayton with uh, such fine men and women of God. Amen. Continue to pray for our Bishop and his family. Pray for the ministry down in Jacksonville. they got a lot of things going on. They're reaching a lot of people. Amen. And not just in Jacksonville, but around the country and around the world. And so we ask that you continue to pray for our family down in Jacksonville, Florida, as you pray for those of us here in Dayton, Ohio. Amen. Amen. Uh, the word of God reads as follows. For those that are able to stand with us, we invite you to stand with us. And uh, at the reading of God's word, again, we will be um, looking at 1 Samuel 17, 1 through 11. Uh, and Matthews 14, 24 through 28. The Bible reads as follows. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled the Sukkoth in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephes Damon, Damon uh, between Sukkoth and Ezekah. Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Eli and drew up their battle drew up their battle line to meet the Philistines the Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another with the valley between them a champion named Goliath who was from Gath came out of the Philistine camp and his height was six cubits and a span hallelujah he had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a, goat, a coat of scale of armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shackles. Hallelujah. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and his arm point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him and Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel <coughs> excuse me why do you come out and line up for battle am I not a Philistine and you are the servants of Saul choose a man and have him come down to me and if he is able to fight and kill me you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, This day, did I miss something here? Yeah. This day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Hallelujah. Matthew 14, 24 through 28. 
and the boat was already considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his most holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Wave at your neighbor. Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of God tonight. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father God, as we are we've gathered here in your house, in your presence, we reach the end, coming to the end of our resurrection season. Celebrated Easter and just celebrated Memorial Day weekend. And we just want to remember the heroes of our faith. The heroes of our lives. Tonight, Father God, we want to say thank you for the freedom that you've given us for the price that was paid by Christ over 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross. A price that came that we could live free. Tonight we remember the cost of it all. The great sacrifice that has been made for our freedom. We thank you for the brave men and women who have fought and continue to fight so courageously for our nation. We ask a special covering and blessing upon them and their families tonight. We pray, Father, that you would be gracious and encircle them with your peace. We pray for your great favor and your goodness to always be evident in their life. Be with those, Lord God, that you provide your protection. Be with those who wear the uniform day in and day out, who serve our communities and our nation every God, we ask that you provide your protection and that you would be their guiding force who leads the way and their real guard who keeps them safe from behind. We ask, Father God, that you would draw them to yourself amidst the dangers that they face in this dark and evil world. For you are the truth. You are the way and you are the light. Father, we weep with those tonight who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Comfort these mothers and fathers, children and spouses, as only you're able to do. The scriptures tells us, Lord, that you have collected all the tears in the bottle. Help them feel your strong presence tonight. Help them to see your tender hand all around them. Enable them, Lord God, we pray, to hear your voice directing them in these dark circumstances. May you draw them daily to your word to process their pain and grieve with hope. Spur the body of Christ around them to be your hands and feet and to meet their practical needs. 
We say thank you, Father God. Thank you that you are the defender of widows and fathers to the fatherless. Bind up their wounds and heal their broken hearts tonight. And that's before our soldiers all around the country. Remind families down in Uvalde, Texas. Remind families, friends, and loved ones in Buffalo, New York that you are a good God and that you're forever doing good. And we pray tonight that even in the midst of their pain, that somehow, some way, they'll see your goodness sustaining them through their pain and sorrow. Help us never to forget the 19 children, the two teachers. who was gunned down in Uvalde, Texas. Help us never to forget those in Buffalo who were killed, murdered from a racist hatred, evil that roams this world, our country. We pray for all of those around the world, especially here in the United States, who have died of gun violence. Tonight, Father, have mercy upon us here in America. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, for we know not what we do. Call our congressmen, senators, state officials, legislators, community activists, and all of those, Lord God, who would stand up and say, now it is enough, enough is enough. Open our eyes, Lord God, and give us direction that we might end this evil and this carnage in our country. Show us the way, Lord. In Jesus' name. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation. And may you forever sing a glorious song over each and every one of them. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God said amen, amen and amen hallelujah glory to God glory to God tonight family God we uh, it's not our hope to keep you long we like to hopefully prayerfully get through this as soon as possible as you can tell I'm uh, something's going on in my chest here I got some coughing and stuff going on so you have to bear with me I pray and those of you that have the power of prayer, amen, we appreciate your prayers tonight. Amen. But tonight we're looking at the story of David and Goliath. <coughs> As many of you know, it's one of the most well-known Bible stories um, throughout Scripture. It's a story of God's ability to deliver his people. And what I like about the story, amen, is that it shows that even through an unlikely hero, hallelujah, God can bring deliverance to the lives of others. In the scriptures, we learn about the challenger to the Israelite army, Goliath. Uh, throughout the scriptures, we learn about the enemy who stands before us and ultimately that our God is the bigger God. Amen. In other words, Goliath don't have nothing on God. Can you say amen? 
It's a story about an unlikely hero named David and uh, when you get a chance, we want to invite you to, to go back and read 1 Samuel 17 and uh, just kind of uh, allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister to your need and share, open the scriptures up to you and share just how good God is and how he will use the unlikely people uh, to bring uh, deliverance and hope to your life. David, uh, here in the text, defeats a mighty giant and who was an enemy to Israel, uh, this giant Gol Goliath. And if you dive into the scriptures, you'll find out that there's a whole lot going on in this text uh, and there's a lot that we can learn from the simple stories or the statement uh, that we that we hear. Uh, God wants us to know tonight when we talk about the challenger of our faith that we do have a challenger of our faith and he is the enemy. He's the evil one. But I believe tonight that God wants us to know, he wants somebody to know that God is bigger than any of your giants. Come on, Holy Ghost. And while there is no doubt that this is true, I want us to unpack this story uh, and allow the Word of God to minister to us tonight. Uh, it is my hope uh, that uh, over the next few weeks, uh, we'll be able to look into this text a little deeper and a little more and just really hear from God uh, about what it is that God wants to teach us and share with us about the challenger of our faith. Today we're going to start with this verse 1 uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Uh, David is confronted as we've just read and uh, I, I'm asking you just to kind of picture, if you will, for those of you that know the story about Goliath and David, picture for a minute, if you can, what Goliath looked like compared to David. The Bible says he was nine feet tall. I'm not sure about you, but uh, I've seen uh, some tall men before, seven, seven foot two or something like that. I know in the, in the arm, I mean in the, uh, in the NBA, they've got some tall, some tall men in the NBA, but I'm not sure if, if, if any of them have, have is, is over nine feet. And if, if you know some, amen, let me, let me know who they are, amen, but I'm, I'm not sure of any of them that's over nine feet. But today, you know, the scripture is, is, is clear uh, because even though we've got some tall sports players, uh, athletes, uh, the Israelites had Goliath. And when you think about nine feet tall, it would help us understand why the Israelites were so frightened. Why the army uh, were intimidated by his presence. Uh, they were confronted with a clear and dominant looking enemy. Here the Bible says that the evil one, when we look at 1 Peter 5 and 8, the evil one is like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. That's according to the NIV. And just like Israel, I believe the Bible is, is, is telling us that we're in the season where we must be aware of what our challenger looks like and what he sounds like. If we're going to have success in the opposition and the persecution that he brings to our lives. What does the enemy look like in your life? What does he sound like? Uh, the first thing that I believe God would have us to know tonight 
when we look at this Goliath is that the enemy will always want to question your faith. If you notice uh, what Goliath asked the Israelites in verse 8 of this chapter. Why are you coming out to me to fight? Why are you coming out to fight? You see, there are many attributes uh, we could probably name that are behind the words of Goliath, of the enemy. However, I believe tonight that there is one that is most important to the relationship to our own battles and to their own enemies that we fight in our lives. I believe this one attribute, this one point that the enemy throws at the body of Christ, the people of God, is doubt. <coughs> Excuse me. And doubt is an age-old tactic that's used by the devil in our lives today. He was using it back then, and he's using it right now today in the lives of men and women of God. Let me ask you a question, family of God. Have you ever struggled with doubt? Have you ever struggled with doubt? Take a moment, if you will, and think about a season or a time in your life where you struggled with doubt. Maybe it was doubt in the circumstance, that a circumstance would turn out the way you wanted it to. Maybe it was doubt in the person in your life, or even doubt toward God himself. The reality of tonight, and I believe scripture is clear in trying to help us understand why the enemy uses this tactic called doubt. All of us have a, a natural tendency to doubt from time to time. That's important for us to acknowledge tonight. And the devil, the evil one, Scripture points out, is the king of doubts. He's a liar, amen, the truth's not in him. Uh, the Bible goes on to say he's the father of all lies. He is consistently planting doubt in our heads that leads us, for many in the body of Christ, to question God. We can go all the way back to Genesis and see, amen, in the first book of the Bible, how he operated and tempted Adam and Eve in the garden. That's a part of Satan's M.O. His, his M.O. is, amen, to get us to doubt what God is saying in our lives. Genesis 3 and 1 said it this way when it came to the fall. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? He's tempting her to doubt the truth of God's word. Here, the evil one asks a simple question that causes doubt to slip into the minds of Adam and Eve. And I believe God would have us to know tonight, many of you already know this, this is, this is just a refresher course for you, because you know, the enemy is in the business of distracting <coughs> the people of God, the kingdom of God. He wants to distract people like you and me from the truth of what it is the Lord has said and is doing in our lives. And so we need to be aware of the questions that we may be confronted with uh, when the enemy comes trying to cause us to doubt the validity of God's word. In the case of Goliath, 
Can you see the Israelites? Can you, can you imagine that when he walked out and they seen how, how large he was, how tall he was, and, 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 and all the stuff he was talking, trying to intimidate them? Can't you see them uh, dropping their heads, amen, uh, and, 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 dis, and disgust, uh, and, 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 and sorrow, and fright? As he asked the question, uh, who, uh, why you come out here to fight? Well, you know, can you imagine how frightened they must have been? But I'm glad tonight that as we look at this text, and we've read it many times before, that the Spirit of the Lord wants us to know that there's something really extraordinary going on in this text. I believe, amen, that the Israelites would probably be pretty accurate in their assumptions. I believe we could probably even go ahead and say that they were right, that there was no way they could defeat Goliath on their own. But what they would find out, amen, is that when they trust God, as David showed, that God would send a warrior who would step out on the scene and the first thing he does is acknowledge, amen, that he don't come to fight Goliath under his own strength, but he comes to fight in the strength and power of the Almighty God. And that's something I believe as we read this text in, about David and Goliath that we must understand. And there's some folk, amen, listening tonight. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with in your life. But there's some, God, some, some Goliath-type giants, amen, in your life right now. And, 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 and you're wondering, amen, how in the world are you going to deal with these giants, amen. And for some of you, you're trying to do it on your own. And, and, and you're discouraged, and, and you're frightened, and you're fearful, and you're wondering, amen, where God is, and you're wondering how long you're going to have to deal with this thing. And I just want to encourage you tonight, amen, that the God is, wants you to know that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's, glory to God. And this is something that we cannot afford to miss tonight. Because too many of the children of God, the people of God, have allowed the enemy to discourage and to cause you to doubt and slip back into your old ways. Or because there are many who have the wrong perspective about your battles and your struggles. Amen. The Bible makes it clear, amen, that we were never meant to fight our battles on our own. We were never meant to fight our struggles on our own. We were never meant, amen, to deal with the pressures and the, and the, and the challenges of life on our own. And what David is trying to share with the with the children of, with the children of Israel and and, 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 the, and the Israelite army, amen, which I believe God is trying to say to us tonight, and for those that are tuned in tonight, is that every time we try to do it on our own, amen, you might as well go ahead and know, amen, that we're going to fail, amen, because we're no match for the enemy by ourselves. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the strong hand of God, amen. To go before us. Think about a time in your own life, family. A time where you tried to shake yourself free from your own sin or from some situations that you found yourself in. If, if it's anything like me, I, I would, I would, I would, I would venture out to say that it didn't work out too well. But we realize as we were going through those things, amen, some of you are going through it right now, and you're finally trying to realize, and amen, hallelujah, that you can't do this on your own, but with Christ, all things are possible. When we receive the questions from the evil one, we need to know how to respond. 
God is not calling us to respond by fear, for he has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a, a power and of a sound mind. He's given us a, a spirit of love. He's given us a spirit, amen, that, that, that trusts in him and that allows him, amen, to fight our battle. We need to know how to respond to the evil one. Instead of responding by fear, God is calling for us to respond in faith. Joshua 1 and 9 says it this way. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That ought to be a blessing to somebody tonight. Because you're going through some things, amen, and the enemy is trying to make you believe that God's not with you. God's not listening. God don't hear you. God's not interested in what you're dealing with. But I'm here to tell you tonight, God wants you to know, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's good news to me. And I know it's good news to you as the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Interesting enough, though, right after Goliath asked the question to the Israelite army, he makes a profound statement, and he says that I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Why? It's because it's very important. The enemy will always come to condemn. Uh, but the word but, when you look at that, that scripture, I am the Philistine champion, but he said, but you are the only, you are only the servants of Saul. When we look at that word but, uh, throughout scripture, because I believe that every time we see it, we can assume that it is in between two different and often opposing statements. For instance, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says, Luke writes, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. In a similar sense, my friends, here in verse 8, uh, what we re read in 1 Samuel 17, uh, I believe uh, that Goliath was seeking to elevate himself above the rest of the Israelite army. On paper, it looked like, amen, it appeared to have the advantage. And so therefore, he speaks with the tone of condemnation extremely confident hallelujah coming into this what he what he called uh, 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 this war uh, or this he, uh, he was gonna smash whoever it was that came out he was pretty confident uh, because of his size and because amen he knew that the, the Israelite army feared him he said that you are only the servants of Saul I believe, family of God, that this statement shows a key tactic that the evil one wants to bring into the lives of the believer. The devil wants to call you something that you're not. He don't want to call you according to who you are in Christ. He wants you to believe that you're less than what God says you were. He told the children of Israel that you are only the servants of Saul. And I just hear God saying tonight that when the enemy comes up to you trying to get you to believe that you're not who God says you are or that you're whoever uh, the enemy says you were, I believe God wants you to stand up by faith, amen, and be able to say to the devil, no, devil, I am j I'm not just a member of the Potter's House Dayton International Ministry, hallelujah, but I am a child of God. I am a man, a son of the Most High God. I am a man, the head and not the tail. I am, hallelujah, all that God says I am. He says I'm more than a conqueror. Glory to God. 
God reminds me, amen, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God reminds me that greater is he that's in me than you, devil, that's in the world. God reminds me, amen, God be for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. I'm not just, glory to God, a member of a church. Come on, Holy Ghost. But I have the power of the most holy God in me, amen. I've got the Holy Ghost down on the inside of me. And family God, I just hear God saying tonight that it's time in this season that we've got to be able to stand up, amen, and look the devil in the eye and let the devil know who we really are in Christ Jesus. Time out for him telling you who you are. Time out, we need to tell him who we are, hallelujah, and what his future going to end up being. Come on, Holy Ghost. The devil is a liar, and he comes to condemn. He wants to tell us, amen, you, ain't, you, you, you know, you're the same person you were 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. You're the same person you were last year. You're the same one that's still getting angry. You're the same one, amen, still doing this. And you're the same one. The enemy wants to try and remind you of your past. But I hear God saying tonight that when the enemy comes to bring up your past, you need to remind him of his future. Come on, Holy Ghost. You need to remind him of his future. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. We read just a few moments ago about doubt and how the enemy tries to get us to doubt the scriptures, get us to doubt God. Let me ask you a question, saints. We take away everything else in our life. And it's just you. It's just you and your faith. Who do we trust when our back's against the wall? Who do we serve when it seems like God's nowhere to be found? Who do we look to when we can't find our way through? It's clear, my friends, how prominent division is in this country, especially in this war of racism and, and the, this culture that we're living in Amen. This this council culture that seems to be going on, uh, and and this and this 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 theory that's going on, this replacement theory that the, that that some of the white supremacists and some others are, are are throwing out there. Amen. There's a lot of division going on in the world. We don't need it in the church. Glory to God. But the problem is, saints of God, is that many who are uh, who are uh, throwing this. This 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 um uh, this theory of replacement around this many who are throwing this 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 cancel culture uh, spirit around many who are uh, are doing a lot of these um, mass shootings and killings around the country. Amen. Are people who say they love God? They're saying they're Christians. And so God is asking us, amen, that when we find ourselves where it looks like there are backs are against the wall, who are we trusting? Who do we serve? Who is it that we're looking to in these moments where the enemy is raising his ugly head? The enemy will use this uh, tool, if you will, this tactic to keep the people of God divided in our church homes, in our families, in our relationships. He wants to divide the people of God any way he can. And he'll do whatever it takes, my friend. To associate you with anyone but God. Hallelujah. That's, that, that's the message in a nutshell. 
the challenger of our faith comes to do any and everything he can to associate you with any other group, person, thing, anything other than God. And if we be honest tonight, many of us, not so much here in the Potter's house, I'm sure, but I'm sure there might be a few in the kingdom of God. We associate ourselves with affiliations, denomination affiliations, cliques. We associate ourselves with others who look like us, who walk like us, who act like us. We associate with people oftentimes and we identify with them opposed to identifying with Christ. There are find to look to political leaders. We see it we see it right now going on in America with Donald Trump, former president. Been impeached twice. Started a riot at the Capitol. And there are still folk who believe that if we were to vote tomorrow on a new president, that Donald Trump would win the presidency again. People are more willing to associate themselves with political power and political leaders, motivational speakers, some their spouse, some their friends, some their gangs. And the enemy comes to try and keep us divided in such a way that we'll call on everybody else but call on God. And I believe, my friend, that when the enemy is able to bring this kind of discord, it creates farther division and chaos in our world. The difference between the Israelite army and David is a perspective of the situation. In our own lives, when we consider what kind of perspectives do we have when we receive the questions that come from the, enemy, the evil one, when we hear the voice of, of condemnation, do we automatically believe it to be true? I'm, I'm ashamed to say, saints of God, that there are some saints in the kingdom that they wear their emotions on their sleeve. And, and they believe when condemnation comes, there are some who believe, amen, well, it must be true. I've heard, them, I've heard them say it. Maybe you've heard them say it. Well, it must be true. It keeps happening. It must be true. Or why would they say that? It must be true. The enemy is a liar, praise God. The Bible says if you are in Christ Jesus, there now there is therefore now no condemnation to them who walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. Glory to God. If we claim to follow Jesus, we must, we must know that it means that we serve a risen Savior. Glory to God. We serve the one who is more powerful, who is all powerful. There's none like him in all the earth. And I believe it's important to remember, saints of God, that when we sense uh, 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 the enemy bringing a false identity upon you, or upon your family, hallelujah, being thrown uh, uh, your way uh, by the voice of condemnation, I believe, family of God, that we ought to say what the word of God says, amen, and, and, and allow those uh, those to roll off of you like water. We got to believe what the word of God says. Amen. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The Bible says when Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. According to 1 Samuel 17 verse 11. The enemy wants to strike fear in the heart of God's children. He wants to strike fear in your life. 
He wants to bring fear to distract you. He wants to bring fear to keep you out of the presence of God. At a time when we needed the Lord the most, the enemy brings fear to try and get you to believe, amen, it ain't going to happen the way God said it's going to happen. Now, it might not happen the way we want it to happen, but if we in Christ, amen, our prayer is, God, thy will be done. Glory to God. Thy will be done. I remember a time in my life when I needed the Lord the most. During a time when my, my faith in Christ wasn't all that strong as it, as it is now. It was during a time when my childhood sweetheart, my first wife, Tracy, was stricken with multiple sclerosis. And some years earlier, I had been praying and believing God that he would turn her situation around. I was praying and believing God that he would raise her up and that we would live happily ever after. For the next few years, the enemy did everything he possibly could in his efforts to get me to doubt God to doubt God's ability to answer my prayers, to doubt God's ability, amen, to heal my wife, to doubt God's ability, amen, to change the situation. He wanted to get my dependence off of the Lord. And I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I believe the enemy, amen, is trying to capitalize on some situation. To make you believe, amen, that God, hallelujah, is not listening to your prayers. God is not looking to answer your prayers. God is not going to do what we believe or ask him to do. The Spirit of the Lord began to show me over the years back in those days. This was many, many years ago. But he began to show me that I was spending too much time Worrying and trying to get the Lord to do what I wanted him to do. You, you know, we, we got love. We want to spend the, the rest of our lives with him. We, we want them to be around forever. And I was asking God to do things that I wanted him to do. I hadn't consulted with my wife. I, uh, she, you know, she, at that time, she wasn't able to talk. She was bed stricken. I mean, she was, in, she was in bad shape. But she loved the Lord. And she was ready to go home and be with the Lord, but I didn't want her to be Lisa. I didn't want her to go, so I did everything I could. I prayed, and I cried, and I screamed, and I cried, and I prayed, asking God to turn that situation around. And ultimately, amen, in 1998, she succumbed to her illness, and she went home to be with the Lord. And if I can just be honest with you, amen, for a long while, I was angry at God. Because I didn't understand why God didn't move the way I wanted him to move. But I learned out, amen, that God moved in the way that he saw fit, that he saw best for my wife and for my life. You see, family of God, in these seasons of our life, God wants us to submit to him those areas of our lives that we have no control over. There are some things in your life, amen, uh, that, that without God's help, without God's power, without his moving, without his grace, amen, uh, there's some things, amen, that only God can do for you tonight. And so I believe that the, the whole crux of this message tonight is to point you to Jesus. The whole point of the message tonight is to encourage to walk by faith. Trust God by faith. Allow God to do what he wants to do in your life, as he did with the children of Israel. I hear God saying tonight, stop stressing and worrying about things that you have no control over. David couldn't have beat Goliath by himself. 
The army of Israel couldn't believe, couldn't beat Goliath by themselves. They needed the power of the Holy Ghost. And David found out and David walked out in faith. And that was why he was able to conquer the giant. Fear will often try to keep us from stepping out in faith. Get that in your spirit, family of God. Fear will often try to keep us from stepping out in faith. Matthew 14, 24 to 28. I'm coming to a close. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Here Peter decided, thanks, that he was going to act on his faith. There are four crucial words spoken by Jesus prior to Peter taking his first step. Peter seemed to have the confidence he needed because of the voice that he chose to listen to and trust. That's the question that we must be confronted with tonight. Whose voice are you listening to? With whom are you putting your trust tonight? I believe the word of God is clear and it shows us consistently what God's voice actually sounds like. And I believe, amen, that it's so important that we spend more time reading and studying the Word of God. In fact, I heard it said this way, that we must soak and bathe ourselves in the Word of God daily. The Word shows us how to deal with our enemy. We can see and hear the voice of God on every page of scripture. God is reminding us tonight that we cannot rely on human strength or the power that we think we might have on our own. Instead tonight, family God, the enemy will be consistently defeating you if we rely on God's strength. if we don't rely on God's power over our own. So over the next few days, my friends, tonight, as you go back and revisit the scriptures that we've noted tonight, I want to challenge you over these next few days. How are you lying on your own strength and your own resolve. Think through some things, some areas in your life where you know you need to ask God for help, but you haven't done it yet. Let me say them again. Over the next few days, how are you relying on your own strength and your own resolve? Think through some areas in your life right now today where you know you need to ask God for help, but you have not done it yet. 
try to recognize the voice of doubt, the voice of condemnation. Try to recognize the voice of fear. And as you pinpoint those voices, doubt, condemnation, fear, regret, bitterness, anger, whatever voice, whatever it is, whichever one it is, remember, my friend, that this is not the voice of God for your life. When you hear those things, when you when you can identify, oh, that's 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 the that's the spirit of doubt. That's the voice of condemnation. That's the voice of fear. That's the voice of anger. That's the voice of judgment. That's the voice of resentment. That's the voice of whatever it is. Know that that is not the voice of God in your life. What does that mean? That means, amen, you don't have to take ownership of it. Glory to God. You don't have to agree with it. Glory to God. You don't have to respond to it. Glory to God. You don't have to acknowledge it. Glory to God. All you need to do is know that that is not my Heavenly Father's voice. Glory to God. And therefore, I don't have to listen to it. Come on, Holy Ghost. Recognize the voice that's speaking in your life. And finally, my friends, I want to encourage you to really spend some time reading the Bible this week. Consider praying a little bit more this week. I want you to read Ephesians chapter 1, the whole chapter, but specifically read 15 and 23. And Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 14. These are what we call our breakfast of champions scriptures. I want to challenge you to highlight them, amen. Write them down, amen. And look at all the ways that God is blessing you in Christ Jesus right here in the text. Ephesians chapter 1, 15 through 23. Colossians 1, 9 through 14. Take special note of how the Word of God empowers us to walk with kingdom intentions. Be assured this week, family, that Jesus is our great high priest. He is our friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He is our living Savior. Hallelujah. He is who he said he is in your life. And finally, Luke chapter 8, verse 33 says this, and I'm coming to a close. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. Now a herd of men, I'm sorry, a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would permit them to enter they're in. The Bible says Jesus permitted them, and then the demons, these evil spirits, went out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. What am I saying? Tonight, family of God, the challenger of our faith. In a nutshell, I believe God would have us to know that when evil, sin, and all the many forces of evil that comes at us in our lives, the sin gets in the way of our lives. When we allow sin, when we allow evil, when we allow all these things, amen, to come into our life, the end result will always cause destruction. If we don't allow the Lord to properly deal with our sin, come on, Holy Ghost. If, if we don't allow the Lord to sin, glory to God, in our lives, I hear God saying tonight and pressing upon us through the that if we don't allow God to properly 
deal with our sin, our sin will choke the life out of us. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. If you don't allow God to deal with your sin, I believe scripture is clear that sin will choke the life out of you. My friends, you were never meant to fight this battle alone. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I encourage you tonight. Hallelujah. Turn it over to God. Turn it over to the Lord. We don't have to walk in fear. We don't have to be uh, 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 intimidated by the evil one. We don't have to be intimidated, amen, by the very things, the circumstances, and the struggles, and the things that we're going through. But one thing we know, amen, we have an advocate with the Lord. Hallelujah. And we can call on the name of Jesus, amen, and turn it over to the Lord. Hallelujah. We can give it to God, amen, and just believe by faith, amen, that God, amen, will do. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I know evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. Amen. This rod and staff is there to protect you and there to pull you out the mess you got yourself in. Come on, Holy Ghost. God will pull you out. Amen. Of the mess we didn't fell into. God will bring you out. Hallelujah. If you turn it over to him. That he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Let them talk. Let them say what they're going to say. Let them do whatever they do. Amen. You keep your eyes on the Lord. You trust in God. Hallelujah. You keep walking for the Lord. Amen. And watch what God does. He said he'll prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. And then I love this part. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Family of God, we got a hiding place in Christ Jesus tonight. We don't have to deal with this thing on our own. Hallelujah. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, hallelujah. Trust God tonight. Submit it over to him. Give it to him. Cast all your cares upon him, knowing that he cares for you. Hallelujah. And allow God, amen, to have his way in your life. He wants to help. He wants to be there for you. He wants to see you through. He wants to turn things around in your life. He wants to use you for his glory that somebody else might be delivered, that somebody else might be set free, that somebody else might come calling on the name of Jesus. He needs you to be clear-minded. He needs you to be focused. He needs you to be ready to move when he's so. He needs you, amen, hallelujah, not to be burdened down with the cares of this world. He needs you, amen, to God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him that he will direct your path. Trust in God. And you ain't got to worry about the challenger of your faith. Because in Christ Jesus, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. We love your family, God, and we thank God for your life tonight. Hallelujah. Go ahead, put your hands together, and give God a hand of praise tonight for the word of God tonight. Hallelujah. The challenger of our faith. May the peace of God be with you. May he keep you forever in his care. And may the joy of the Lord forever be your strength. Family of God, tonight, if there's one who does not know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we invite you tonight to call on the name of the Lord. And we believe, amen, if you've called on the name of the Lord, as we've shared the scriptures tonight, as we've laid out, amen, that we have an advocate with the Father. We've got someone who fights our battles for us. We've got someone who goes before us, amen, and prepares the way for us. 
you've received Jesus Christ into your life tonight. We believe, amen, if you call on him and accept him into your heart, ask him to come into your life, forgive you of your sins, and save your soul, we believe that he'll do just that. We believe, amen, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10, and so many other scriptures throughout the Bible, amen, that if you call on the name of the Lord, amen, he'll come and abide with you and you with him. He'll take up residence right there in your life, amen, and become Lord of your life. Tonight can be your day. Tonight can be the first day, the best day of your life, amen, where you can spend eternity with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Call on him. Trust him. Give your life over to him and allow God to have his way. Amen and amen. We love you and we thank God for you. We invite you now, amen, to sow a seed of love to the house of God that we can continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the country, all around the world. We believe in amen, just like you, amen, that the word of God will land in somebody's heart. It'll take root, amen, and somebody will have hope because of the power of the word of God. Won't you trust him tonight? You can sow a seed tonight at the Potter's House, T-P-H-D-I-M, T-P-H-D-I-M, the number two. We invite you to sow your seed, sow your tithes and your offerings, amen, and, uh, and, and we, we pray, amen, that we'll put that seed, uh, we'll put that seed to work for the Lord, and somebody will be saved because of your donations and because of your support, in Jesus' name. We love you. We thank God for you. Until we're able to meet again, go with God. Stay safe, family of God. Stay safe, be strong in the Lord, hallelujah, and love one another in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, bless your Lord. Thank you. Those of you here, amen, feel free to come. Put your feet here on the altar.